happy Friday. Happy free fun Friday. I hope you guys had an awesome week. I'm very excited about today's lesson because we get to talk more about one of my favorite insects. We're going to take a look at our caterpillars that I introduced to you on Wednesday. So here's a question. How much bigger do you think that caterpillar or those caterpillars grew in the days since I've seen you last? Which is about only three days. How much bigger could that caterpillar be? Are you ready to see? Take a look at our friends now. Wow! Look at how big they are. They have pretty much doubled in size and they've gotten big enough that I can see more about what it, their body and their structure looks like. If I were to describe it, I would say it looks like they, or describe them, they look like they have spikes all over their bodies. Well, guess what? They're not spikes. They're actually fine hairs. And, oh, if you can see this guy, he's kind of arching back. Let's see if I can zoom in that little guy right there. He is gripping the plastic container somehow. How is he doing that? Well, caterpillars actually have a whole bunch of legs. So what I'm going to do for you is try to take some up-close pictures with my camera and show them next week so you can kind of see all the details I can see. I will also link a, a detailed diagram, which is like a picture with labels of what the Painted Lady Caterpillar body looks like so you kind of know what I am seeing. All right, well, Let's try to figure out how the caterpillar became a caterpillar and how a butterfly becomes a butterfly. How does this turn into this? How does that work? Well, do you think a butterfly has a butterfly? Because where would this guy come in? No, somehow this and this need to be linked together in, we call it complete metamorphosis, like a, like a cycle of life. So how does that cycle of life begin? I think of other animals that make transformations like butterflies, kind of like a frog. Is a frog born as a frog? It isn't. A frog lays an egg. The egg becomes a tadpole which looks very different. It almost looks like a tiny little fish. Then, after a while, the tadpole grows arms and legs and limbs. And then, all of that becomes a frog. So, you are right. A caterpillar comes out of an egg, just like a tadpole does. So, I'm going to make the life cycle of a caterpillar or of a lady, or a, <laughs> a butterfly, and I'm gonna start at the very top. I'm gonna draw in a circle, the circle of life for a butterfly. So at the very top, I'm going to make a dot. Where do you think, or a circle, there's my egg. Where do you think a caterpillar, or I'm sorry, a butterfly, would lay an egg? Because we know this must be the end, or the top, or, um, the, what would be the last part <laughs> of a butterfly cycle, right? Because we know that this turns into this. So the butterfly must be the one in charge of laying eggs. So I'm gonna start with the egg at the very top. It's kind of the end and the beginning. Where would a butterfly lay an egg? Yes, I think you're right. Maybe on a leaf somewhere. So here's my egg on a leaf. What happens to that egg? When it hatches, it is going to become a caterpillar. You're right. The caterpillar is on the leaf and he's going to start munching. So here's my caterpillar. Doo -doo -doo. That is the next 
phase. I have an egg. Here's my egg. Then I have a caterpillar. Do you remember from our story what comes next? How, what's the, the next step between this and this? There's kind of a fancy word for that. And it is, here it is, it is a chrysalis. Sometimes you might have heard the word cocoon, but scientists use the word chrysalis to describe this sack-like thing. A caterpillar will find a safe location. Our painted lady caterpillars will actually attach to the top of the container turn into a J-shape, and then encase themselves, enclose themselves in a sack like this, a chrysalis. So let me draw my chrysalis. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to draw it as well as this, but we're going to draw kind of a sack hanging there. And it looks kind of like this. So now we have four parts to the life cycle of a butterfly. We start with the egg, then we go to the caterpillar, then the chrysalis, then what happens? This turns into this, yes! The fourth and final piece is a beautiful butterfly. A beautiful butterfly, and I'm making my butterfly here. So, this is the life cycle of a butterfly. And we call it a complete metamorphosis because it's because it starts this and it ends this. A complete change. Now, when we start talking about ladybugs, they do not go from a creepy crawly on a leaf to a beautiful flying creature. They actually start as little bugs and just take shape as they grow. So that is incomplete metamorphosis, not a complete change. Your activity today is, you have two of them. There's a wonderful mini book that I would love for you to read and it talks about the life cycle of the butterfly. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. Now, when you are looking at that, you, there's a couple of choices. Don't feel like you have to print, the, print um, the, book, the booklet out if you don't want to. You could just read it on your computer screen. There are going to be two of the same pages on one paper because for teachers it makes it easier. We save paper when we can make two booklets out of the same um, amount of paper, if that makes sense. So don't feel like you have to print out um, the pages if you don't want to. If you do, it could uh, it could be one of the books that go in your um, book bag that you can pull out and read whenever you have a chance. So that is attached. Also, you have a butter um, butterfly life cycle activity where you get to put the parts of the life cycle in the right order to show egg, caterpillar chrysalis butterfly. Yes, good. Well, I'm wondering if before we read our story today, if you guys would like to name our butterflies. There are five of them and I would love for you guys to send me some ideas. If you get a chance, you could just simply reply to the email that um, this lesson is attached to and come up with some fun names. Now, they look exactly the same to me and they're all going to turn into this beautiful butterfly. They're all going to be painted ladies. So I can't really say that that's Bob or Henry, but it might be fun if we come up with five different names and um, the, then they feel more like a family than just, than just visitors. So think about that. If you'd like to do that, you can just um, forward it to me or reply to my email. Okay, guys, here is our story today. And it is kind of like Miss B. It is a little boy who says, I love bugs, is the title of the story. Over here, the word by. Just a reminder, by means the author, the person who wrote the words. You're right. 
And over here is Illustrator. What does that mean? Illustrator is who drew the pictures. You are correct. And oftentimes, if it is drawn pictures, we know that it's going to be fiction. It can be based on something real, but the stories just pretend. Here is our story today. I Love Bugs by um, Mr. Struggers. You know I struggle with these names. Illustrated by Shari um, Halpern. Halpern. All right, oh, I like this already. Take a look at all of those awesome pictures and descriptions and labels. Spider and butterfly and caterpillar and water bug and bee. Do you know I love bees too? Because I love flowers. The woolly bear, the grasshopper, dragonfly, beetle, and whoop, millipede. I bet this book is all about different kinds of bugs. I love bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. I like bugs. Bugs that creep, bugs that crawl, and look carefully. Can you see some bugs in there? <laughs> I really need to figure out how to hold my book better, don't I? What do you see? Oh, he's pointing to something. What is this right over here? It looks furry, kind of like my guys, kind of like our classroom friends. Bugs that hop or fly. Do you like grasshoppers that fly? Not so much me. I don't like them touching my legs when I walk through a field of flying, um, Grasshoppers, oh, I don't like them landing on me, but I really do like dragonflies. I find they are just beautiful to watch. I love to find them under rocks or watch them in the sky. There she's, the kitty's chasing a butterfly. These bugs paddle. This one weaves. Does that make you think back to when we talked about spiders and learned all about spiders? Some make honey. Some chew leaves and there is a caterpillar, yay! We probably can guess or bet that he came out of his egg on this leaf and is munching his way through to becoming a chrysalis. Some bugs burrow underground like ants. Others swoop and buzz around. Do you know my son got a got an ant farm um, very recently, and he's been watching the ants tunnel through, make tunnels through um, not dirt but sand. So I might bring that up to show you guys in a little bit too. This one's like a bit of bark. Now this furry guy that kind of looks like a butterfly is actually a moth. And they are a little bit different. This one looks like a twig. Do you know what insect this is? Or what bug? This is a praying mantis. They're fascinating bugs. They're called praying mantises because they often look like they're praying um, when they are just blending in. Um, they, they're very interesting bugs. Uh, cicadas buzz a summer song. Crickets dance a jig. Have you heard of us? Have you heard of cicadas? Sometimes, um, I'm pretty sure I've heard them here, but where I came from, up in northern Colorado, we had lots of cicadas, and they would be in the trees, and they'd make a really loud sound, actually. Um, and you can definitely tell it's a cicada or a bunch of cicadas when you hear them. I like bugs that blink at night or flutter round the back porch light. This is a moth, and these are, what are those called? Fireflies. 
Yes, sure wish we had those here. Wouldn't it be fun to catch them and watch them glow? <laughs> That's pretty cute. But this bug is the best of all. It's a ladybug and she loves to crawl. <laughs> That's a cute way to end this story. She's not a bug at all, huh? just in a costume. There's that kitty. Worn out from chasing bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. I love bugs. Just kind of a fun story. And then here's some more. The Luna Moth, Cricket, Firefly, Baby Sister, <laughs> Ladybug. Here's that moth we talked about. Praying Mantis, Cicadas, um, Deerfly, and Ant. Do you know what Miss B has at her house? I have some horse flies. And guess what? They bite even me. They bite the horses and they actually bite people too. And it hurts. They're kind of um, stinkery. Not my favorite. I hope that you guys enjoy your activities and learn a little bit about how butterflies transform. And this weekend, do you know Miss B has already seen some butterflies out, out at her house? So if you, if it's a nice day, head outside to the backyard, front yard, take a walk and see if you can find any butterflies. And if you do, you probably can bet that sooner or later, this is going to lay this, which will turn into this, and eventually go back to or grow into a butterfly. What a fun thing to learn about. All right, guys, have an amazing weekend, and I will see you again on Monday. Bye.